Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I got a microphone today. Today's it's a talking head video because if you're watching this video when it goes live, I am either at the airport or on a plane on my way to Denver, Colorado for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. So if you're in the area and you make your way out this weekend, say hi. I'll be wandering around the floor, probably hanging out at the Voron booth. And today's video is just gonna be a quick talking head video. And what we're gonna talk about is two things. One is something that's coming up a bunch lately um, in regards to uh, branding and some printers that are being released on the market. Another one is a question I get asked often and they both kind of tie together. And I'm gonna start with a very simple question. What is a Voron? What is a Voron? Well, it, it's it's a 3D printer. Um, that's a Voron. These are Vorons. Um, I've got a Voron on the floor there. The, we got the V0, which is a small Voron. We got the switch wire with a bed flinging Voron. Uh, but they're 3D printers. They're, there's open source designs. And you know, if, if you can't build one, uh, you can just buy one now, apparently. Um, <laughs> at least according to some people and some marketing. But are those really Vorons? So, for those that don't know the history of Voron design, I will link a full interview I did with Max Olam, um, Russian cat food, the founder of Voron design. I'll link that below. But the TLDR, what got Voron started was Ultimaker at home. The original Voron 1.0 was designed to be an Ultimaker 2 tier of machine that you could build at home using commercial off the shelf components. That's the key there, commercial off the shelf, COTS. What that means is all Vorons are designed with the goal of having no custom components required, no single source of a component. So if you go to build any of the Voron design designs, the base designs as they come from the Voron design team, I'm not talking about mods or offshoots like the printers for ants or some of the other mods out there or community designs. I'm talking the stock Voron design Vorons. None of them require custom components. You don't need to source machined bed mounts or custom brackets. It, it's, it's off the shelf extrusions, off the shelf bearings, off the shelf motors. Yes, they're 3D printed components, but those can be printed on pretty much any 3D printer that can print ABS. Uh, nothing on a Voron, you can only really get from one spot. Even on the switch wire, we have the key back, uh, which is used to keep the gantry up because it is a Core X Z, which is Core X Y, but vertical. Uh, that you can source from multiple different stores and there are designs that don't even use that. There's alternative designs that don't even use the key back. So everything on a Voron is designed to be commercial off the shelf when it comes to sourcing the components. That's one of the main design goals and one of the main driving ethos around Voron design is not requiring those custom components. So, I, I know this has been brought up, a bunch of people have said this, but there are some printers available for sale, the Saval SV08 upcoming, uh, the Trodon uh, from Vivendo. Those are Vorons you can buy, according to a lot of people. If, if you can't, you know, you don't have the technical skill to spend a weekend building a kit, or you don't have the 20 to 24 hours it takes to build a, a Voron Trident or V2, for example, you could just you could just buy a Voron. There's companies that sell Vorons. You, it takes an hour to put together. I, I'm sorry, those aren't Vorons. You know, they might have the same motion system, the SV08 and the Vivendo tro, uh, Trodon, for example. They're flying gantry core XYs, the same as a V2. Well, in that case, this right here, this is a Trident because it's a fixed gantry with a moving bed. That, that's how the Trident is. You got a fixed gantry and a moving bed. Um, so is, is, is that a Voron? Well, this, the bed moves back and forth, but it's, well, that's not a, that's not a switch wire, but the Creality has a CR6, that's, that's Core X Ed. So is that a switch wire? Is that a Voron too? So to answer the question, um, it, it's quite simple. Is it a design? that uses commercial off the shelf components and 3D printed components conjunctually as the basis of the design itself. If yes, and it's from Voron Design, it's, it's, a, it's a Voron Design, it's a Voron. Um, if it's based on an existing Voron Design printer and still follows those uh, design goals, such as the printers for ants, it can be argued those are still Vorons too. And a lot of people do believe those are Voron variants. Um, but if you are buying a commercial off the shelf printer that came in a box and it takes you a couple hours to put together and it's got custom injection molded components or custom machine components, I'm sorry to say that that may be a great printer and it may fit your use case, 
but it's not a Voron. And trying to tie it to Voron or use Voron in the marketing or trying to tell people that, hey, if you can't build a Voron, now you can buy a Voron. That's that's not exactly true because it's not a Voron. It, it's, it doesn't follow the design ethos of a Voron. It's not built out of commercial off-the-shelf components. Uh, it requires custom components from a single source supplier. Um, so yeah, so... If you want to build a Voron, build a Voron. They're great. There's tons of options. There's kits from multiple different manufacturers, from high-end kits, low-end kits. You can self-source. You can convert enders into switch wires. There's a lot of different ways to get into Voron. But to claim that a commercial off-the-shelf printer sold by a company that it comes as a mostly pre-assembled kit that really doesn't follow the Voron design design ethos um, is a Voron is, is not true. It's not a Voron. So... So with that out of the way, if you want to build a Voron, which Voron should you build? That's a question I get asked often uh, because there are five main Voron design printers and those are the five main ones I'll focus on. I won't focus on like the derivatives or the printers for ants or the offshoots and whatnot, uh, but they're interesting printers if you want to build those ones too. I have, they're, they're fun. But we're going to focus on the five main Vorons. That is the V2 series, the Trident, the Legacy, the V0 and the switch wire. So we'll start with the Trident and the V2 series. And I'm gonna actually group those two together because they're a lot more similar than you would think. So first things first though, if you don't know which Voron to build, build a Trident. It's as simple as that. Uh, when it comes to Voron printers, they are designed for a certain size and goal in mind. Most Vorons are built using 2020 extrusions. Uh, sizes for the V2 and the Trident range from 250, 300, and 350. Those are the stock sizes. Can you go bigger if you want to? It's not really designed with large format in the mind. Uh, Vorons, again, are basically the Ultimaker at home. That's the original legacy of it, and designs kind of get iterated on that down the line. So we're still using 2020 for the extrusion. So if you want to go big and do like a 500 uh, spec printer, uh, you might want to look at something like a rat rig. Um, or if you're after an absolute speed demon of a printer because you want to do speed benches for easy internet points, look at something like a VZBot. Those are designed with high speed in mind. They have machine components. You, you're going to get a little bit more top end performance out of something like that. Um, doesn't mean a Voron's not fast, it's just Voron isn't designed with that specific goal in mind. Vorons are designed with 3D printed components in mind, for example, because of the whole not requiring custom machine components as part of the design. So you have the Trident and the V2. Well, guess what? They have the both exactly the same gantry. On a V2, the gantry moves up and down and the bed is fixed. On the Trident, the gantry is fixed and the bed moves up and down. I'll be honest, print quality differences between the two, most people can't even tell. Um, yeah, the, the Trident is more susceptible to Z wobble because you have lead screws. The V2, because the gantry isn't rigidly attached to the frame, you may have slightly more issues in regards to the gantry kind of floating if you didn't build it correctly or your screws aren't tight. They, they both have pros and cons, but at the end of the day, performance wise, they're both within margin of error of each other you you really if i had two benchies here and one was printed on a v2 and one was printed on a trident and i told you which one's which odds are you're not gonna be able to tell the difference i couldn't tell the difference most people couldn't tell the difference uh but they do have some design differences obviously the v2 because the bed doesn't move it's fixed and it's low it has a lower center of gravity if you're gonna build a bigger printer the V2 series makes a little bit more sense in my opinion, simply because of that lower center of mass, less moving mass. The weight of the uh, moving mass is consistent throughout the print because it's just the gantry that moves up and down. The bed with all the weight on it stays low. On the Trident, it's a little bit easier of a build. It's a little bit less complex of a build. It's a more traditional design. You still get gantry or bed tramming on both because they're independent Z motors. In my opinion, the Trident kind of shines at 250 to 300 on the size, whereas the V2 makes a bit more sense at 300 to 350 on the size. At 300, you can't go wrong with either. The Trident is a little bit cheaper. It is a little bit easier to maintain. And if you are looking and doing mods, uh, certain mods are more conductive to one or the other. For example, Tap Changer is designed with a V2 in mind. Uh, if you're doing something like IDEX, because there are some IDEX mods of Vorons. Uh, the Trident makes a bit more sense there as your base. So 
a running theme with all of this is gonna be, you're gonna have to look at what your goals are with your printer and what you plan to use it for um, and take those considerations in mind when it comes to choosing. So after the Trident and the V2, uh, we have the V0, a very common choice, a very popular choice uh, for a secondary printer. I really don't recommend that you start with the V0. Um, it is a fun build. I have built them several times. In fact, the, the V2 or the V0 series is probably the printer I built the most on this channel uh, and it's different variations and whatnot. And it is a fun printer. It's a very capable printer. Again, all Vorons are designed to be enclosed from the start. So if you're looking for a little desktop machine to sit with you as you print off rapid prototypes and ABS uh, in an office, cool, that, that, that might be something you're looking into. But you need to bear in mind, it is a finicky little printer to build. It is small. It uses 1515 extrusions or pre-assembly nuts. It, 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 is, it can be finicky to build. And if you've never built a 3D printer before, uh, because there's an order of operations, the manual's 100 plus pages, it might be a little overwhelming. And also, it is a small printer. It's only 120 millimeters cubed. Uh, yes, it can do ABS and print pretty much everything except for the crazy exotic filaments out there. Uh, but that 120 millimeter print volume is gonna be limiting. When I got into 3D printing, I started with the Monoprice Select Mini, which had the same print volume. And within about two or three weeks, I was looking at bigger printers because I had already outgrown it. So the V0, great secondary printer great additional printer, or if you just love building printers, it is a fun build, um, but I really don't recommend if you're diving into DIY 3D printers, especially Vorons, to start with the V0, but it is a great secondary printer. Um, after that, we have the switch wire. Now the switch wire is kind of like the weird redheaded stepchild of the Voron family, because most Vorons are Core XY, and the switch wire is a Core XZ. It's Core XY, but vertical. That, that, that's all it is. You take a Core XY motion platform and you just stand it up, That that's it. Switchwire has a lot of advantages. Uh, you never have to worry about Z wobble. Uh, it can do really fast Z hop. So if you're printing a model like an Eiffel Tower or something where you're doing a lot of Z hopping around, that little time saving does add up. Um, it's based on the Mark 52 bed from the Prusa. So if you have an old Prusa around like a Mark II or something, you can salvage components from that to use to build a switch wire. Um, and a lot of people have actually done what's called an ender wire build where you take a ender machine and you convert that into a switch wire. So instead of going through the hassle of upgrading a stock ender to make it a competent printer, you basically just salvage the components you can out of it and build a switch wire uh, and a lot of people who have built those like them. I haven't built a, uh, an ender wire. I have built a switch wire though. I will say it is probably my least used Voron simply for the fact that I never actually enclosed my switch wire. Um, so it was my open air PLA machine and I don't do a lot of PLA printing. So unfortunately it's, it's very good at collecting dust in my collection, but I know a lot of people that have switch wires that get a lot of use out of them. Um, when I did have one, I set it up for dual Bowden feed and it actually worked pretty good. So it, it's a fun little machine to experiment on. It's a little quirky, but it's there. And if you want to build one or if you want to convert a printer into a switch wire, um, go for it. It's a fun build. It's actually probably one of the easiest four ons to build too. And lastly, we have the legacy. Now the legacy is a little bit of an oddball. Um, not so much like the switch wire, but it's it, it, it's in a different way. If I were to compare a uh, legacy to something else, I would consider it like a resto mod of a classic car. Because what the legacy is designed to be is a throwback to the first generation of Vorons, the V1 series, for example, where it had the rods and the linear bearings and whatnot. But it's it's not quite that much of a throwback because we have a modern tool head on it. We have clipper, we have modern features. So if you were to take the hardware that we had back in 2016, but design a modern printer with using as much of that as you can, you would get a legacy. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's really no kits available for the legacies. Um, most of the builds I've seen have been self-sourced scratch builds or converting older Vorons like the V1 to V1.6 series into a legacy. I have a V1.0, uh, but I really don't want to convert it to a legacy because it's a V1.0. It's a little bit of a classic there. Um, so the legacy is the one Voron design printer I haven't actually built yet. So if you know anyone who has a legacy kit, reach out.
because I'm interested in building one because I haven't built one yet. Um, I need to add it to my collection. So that's just a quick rundown of the main Voron Design printers. They're all fun to build. They all have their own pros and cons. On the Voron Design website, there's write-ups about each one uh, that goes into a little bit more detail. And you can always join the Voron Discord or subreddit or forums and ask about which one. Again, if you don't know which one to build, I really recommend the Trident. It's a very good middle ground of all the Vorons. It's not the most complicated build. It's not the most expensive build. You're still gonna get all the performance that you would expect out of a Voron with it. And it, it's just a very solid machine. It, both the V2 and the Trident have been feature complete for a bit now. Um, we're on, you know, there's been several revisions of them. They're, they're pretty solid base machines. And then if you are building a Voron, one thing I always recommend is always build it stock first. Yes, there's a ton of community mods out there. And if you want to start off using like different panel clips or lights or whatever, that that's fine. But in terms of the base mechanicals of the printer and things like tool heads and whatnot, if you're going to build a Voron, I recommend build it stock. And when it comes to building a Voron, how do you get your parts? Back in the old days, we'd recommend self-sourcing because the original kits were kind of, well, when we originally started, there were no kits. And then when the kits first came out, they weren't great. But nowadays, let's be honest, buy a kit. Self-sourcing a Voron in today's day and age is not really worth it. Uh, with the cost of shipping, uh, the individual prices of the components going up, you're probably and most likely going to get the best deal if you just buy a pre-made kit. Now, Voron Design does not officially endorse any kits at all. If you go on Voron Design website, you're not going to find any links to any kits other than just a basic bill of materials for the, the, the printer itself. Um, now, my personal recommendation with kits, the only ones that I have no qualms about going, you should buy them, are L kits from LDO Motors. I've built several of them over the years. LDO is a great company to work with. Um, I've had great interactions with Jason and the whole team at LDO. And those are the only kits that I can say wholeheartedly, you can't go wrong buying one of them. However, not everyone can buy LDO Motors kits. There's kits from other manufacturers. I've been told the Formbot kits are pretty good. Uh, the Seaboard kits started off pretty cheap, um, but now they're getting pretty good too, apparently. Um, th there's tons of different manufacturers. The best bet, I, the best option I can say is just asking around because depending on where you live in the world, certain kits may be better options for you than others. Just just ask around. It's not going to hurt. And again, if you, if you, you can't go wrong with LDO. So simple as that. So I hope this video answers some of the common questions I get asked about which Voron should I build. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth with the Voron variants, the, the printers for ants, for example, if you don't know what they are. Imagine taking a V2 or a Trident and building it with the hardware you would use to build a V0. So you have like the Micron, the Salad Fork, which are just scaled down uh, full-size Vorons. And then there's all kinds of other variants, uh, Tridex, which is a Trident Idex uh, variant. There, there's all kinds of different variants out there and mods, and I'm not going to go into those. You can look into them yourself. I'm, I just focused on the main Vorons because a lot of those are based on those five main designs there. Um, and I hope I answered the question as to what is a Voron because because lately, just because of the way I've seen some people talking on social media about the off the shelf printers that are Vorons that aren't from Voron um, and referring to them as Vorons for those that can't build Vorons, it's, it's not really true. Because a Voron, again, is a printer that you can build at home using no special tools and it doesn't require any custom components. So while you might not need special tools to build an SV08 or a Trodon, it's full of custom components. So it's, it doesn't, it's not a Voron. It, it's a fine printer. They may be fine printers. They, they're flying gantry core XYs, but a flying gantry core XY does not a Voron make simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Again, I'm traveling for Rocky Mountains. So just a quick talking head video today, just getting some thoughts out there. Uh, if you do have any more questions, ask them in the comments below. It's open for a reason. I'm sure there's going to be a ton of questions. And if you want to see a follow-up video to this, going into more depth on one of the topics or something else, let me know. Um, I'm always open to suggestion. And if you want to help support the channel, the content I create, the things I do, be sure to check out the links in the description. Some of them are affiliate links. Don't cost you anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. And on your way out, don't forget to like that smash button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. And if you really want to help support the channel, consider becoming a channel member, a Patreon supporter, or on one of the live streams, give the memberships to others. It's really cool to do. I'm Nero3D, the Canuck creator, and I shall see you in Colorado. Cheers.